Hi, my name is Mike Mahan from the SMA Solar Academy, and in this tech tip, we're going to cover the installation of the SMA Sunny Boy Storage US Inverter. The Sunny Boy Storage US Inverter with one or more approved high voltage lithium ion batteries and approved energy meter is the SMA Energy System. This system allows households to increase self-consumption of PV energy from new or existing PV systems. It increases economic benefit while complying with zero export regulation, allowing peak load shaving or accommodating time of use utility rate structures. Installation of the SMA energy system is a simple three-step process. Installation of the approved battery, installation of the approved energy meter, and installation of the Sunny Boy Storage US inverter. For clarity in this video, we will not be showing conduit. Ensure actual installations follow all required codes and standards and ensure personnel wear all appropriate PPE. The Sunny Boy storage must be used with an approved high voltage lithium ion battery. The list of approved batteries can be found on the product page at sma-america.com. In this video, we will utilize a BYD battery box HV5. The battery box HV consists of three sections, a base plate, a top battery control unit, or BCU, where all wiring is done, and two to four identical 2.5 kilowatt hour B plus H battery modules. The battery box HV contains two B plus H modules. Follow all manufacturer's documentation for proper assembly, mounting, and wiring. The battery box HV is a freestanding unit with an optional wall mount bracket. The battery is assembled on site by placing the base correctly and leveling, then stacking and securing the storage units, and finally attaching the battery control unit at the top. Ensure the battery circuit breaker is off. Remove the top cover of the BCU to expose the wiring area. Route the DC positive and negative conductors and the equipment grounding conductor for the battery into the conduit to the inverter and attach the appropriate terminals following the manufacturer's instructions. The CAN bus wiring attaches to terminal block J2. Please refer to the approved battery documentation for the correct location of each conductor. The CAN bus cable cannot exceed 33 feet. This can be routed into a separate conduit to the inverter. If run in the same conduit as the DC conductors, the insulation of the CAN bus cable must be rated to 600 volts. Insert an Ethernet cable into the Ethernet port and route out of a knockout if wired communications to the battery will be used. Reattach the cover of the BCU. The battery is wired and ready for commissioning. This step will happen before the Sunny Boy Storage Commissioning and will be shown in the Sunny Boy Storage Commissioning Tech Tip. Once the battery is wired, the energy meter can be installed. The approved energy meters are listed in the Sunny Boy Storage Installation Manual. In this video, we will show the WNC-3Y-208-MB model from Continental Control Systems. Two current transformers, or CTs, are also required. Many models are available from Continental Control Systems. We will use 100 amp rated split core models. Ensure that the CTs are secured so that they do not move or strain the conductors and follow all code and local requirements. Continental Control Systems recommends at least one inch separation of the CTs attached to different phases. Each of the CTs is marked with an arrow. Ensure that the arrow faces towards the utility. The CT leads are black and white. They land on the appropriately marked terminals on the CT plug on the energy meter. Note that the plug can be removed from the energy meter if that eases installation. The 3Y-208 meter is powered from the main service panel. The wires from the breaker and service neutral and ground attach on the green plug on the appropriate terminals. Ensure the dip switches on the front of the meter are set as follows. One through six should be in the zero or lower position and seven and eight should be in the on or one or upper position. The RS-485 cable provides the meter data to the Sunny Boy storage. Attach the three wires to the A-, B+, and C terminals on the Modbus plug and route the cable back to the inverter, observing all applicable codes. Please note that this cable cannot exceed 33 feet in length. Now we are ready for the installation of the Sunny Boy Storage US. The inverter ships with a mounting bracket, production test reports, installation manual, and a bag of accessories and plugs. It is recommended to install all of the plugs in the inverter for future expansion. The bracket needs to be mounted with three screws appropriate for the mounting surface and the weight of the inverter. This hardware is not included. 
Once the bracket is securely mounted and level, hang the inverter, ensuring that it hangs on the bracket at all four locations. Attach the inverter to the bracket with the long screw, securing it with a Torx 25 wrench. The lower black cover of the connection unit can now be removed by loosening the six self-retaining screws with a Torx 25 driver. On shipment, the ribbon cable connecting the LED board on the cover to the communications board is not attached, but secured on the board. If servicing in the future, this ribbon cable needs to be detached from the communications board. Set the lid aside in a safe location. The layout of the connection unit is very similar to the Sunny Boy US PV inverter. In place of the external DC disconnect is a pre-wired internal fuse block. The wiring from the fuse block to the DC connection plug has been done at the factory. The A and B inputs to the inverter are paralleled at the fuse block for battery inputs up to 20 amps. The C input is wired for a battery input up to 10 amps. The A and B fuse holders contain 25 amp fuses and the C fuse holders contain 15 amp fuses. These can be checked for continuity and replaced. The inverter output and backup light AC plugs are identical to those of the Sunny Boy and are included in the accessories bag. The equipment ground connection points are below the communication cable gland clamp bar and the hardware is also in the accessories bag. The communication board provides the two ethernet jacks for speed wire communications and the USB port for manual firmware updates. The new battery interface module provides four CAN bus ports where the six pole connectors attach up to three batteries and the optional automatic backup unit. The RS-485 data cable from the energy meter attaches at one of the ports marked with 2357 on the right. The switch plug for the backup light switch attaches on the battery interface module at the port marked with the switch icon and not on the communications board. The inverter ships with one DC and one AC knockout taped. Remove the tape and any knockout plugs for knockout holes to be utilized. Again, we will not show conduit in this video, but ensure that all appropriate codes and requirements for the install environment are satisfied for an actual installation. Install and tighten down the AC connection plug. Insert the AC conductors through the appropriate knockout. Route the equipment ground conductor down to an available terminal, strip back three quarters of an inch, and secure with the grounding hardware, following the instructions in section 6.2.2 of the installation manual. Tighten to 53 inch pounds. Insert the L1, L2, and neutral conductors through the ferrite and trim back three quarters of an inch. Insert the conductors into the round holes of the AC plug following the markings on the plug. A small standard screwdriver can be used in the top holes to release the plug clamps before the conductor is inserted. Slide the ferrite up as close as possible to the AC plug and secure with the included zip tie, trimming off any excess carefully. If utilizing the backup light feature, route the five conductors into an appropriate knockout. Route the equipment ground conductor down to an available terminal, strip back three quarters of an inch and tighten to 53 inch pounds. Insert the AC plug and secure it. Strip back the line and neutral backup light outlet conductors about six tenths of an inch and insert into the AC plug in the marked round terminals. Strip the switch wires back by one quarter to four tenths of an inch and insert them into the two pole green plug. Attach the plug to the backup light switch port on the battery interface module. Remember the switch is just a signal circuit and not breaking the line conductor of the outlet. So the order of the wires in this plug does not matter. If attaching the inverter to a wired network, route an ethernet cable through one of the knockouts and connect using one of the RJ45 jacks on the communication board. The RS-485 cable from the energy meter attaches at one of the two RS-485 plugs on the battery interface module using a four pole plug. Strip back the cable two inches and fold back six tenths of an inch of the shield. Trim the conductor insulation a quarter inch. Insert into the two, five, and seven terminals by lifting the lever above the terminal, inserting the conductor, and closing the lever. Attach the plug to one of the RS-485 terminals. Insert the exposed cable shield into one of the clamps on the communications ground clamp bar. Ensure that the conductors are paired correctly from the meter to the inverter. The conductors landed at the two, five, and seven terminals on the inverter are the B plus, C, and A minus respectively at the meter. The CAN bus cable from the battery will attach to the BAT1 terminal on the battery interface module using one of the six pole plugs. Strip back the cable two inches and fold back six tenths of an inch of the shield. Trim the conductor insulation a quarter inch. Refer to the approved battery document for the correct location of the conductors in the plug. Insert the plug into the BAT1 terminal. Insert the exposed cable shield into one of the clamps on the communications ground clamp bar. Route the DC conductors into the appropriate knockout. Route the equipment ground conductor to one of the grounding terminals. Strip back three quarters of an inch of the insulation and attach using grounding hardware. Tighten to 53 inch pounds. Strip back the DC conductors four tenths of an inch 
and insert into the appropriate positions on the fuse block. Tighten using a Phillips screwdriver 2 to 18 to 22 inch pounds. Ensure that the polarity is correct. Now we are ready to put the cover back on the inverter. Ensure both ends of the LED board ribbon cable are securely seated, attach the cover, and tighten the six screws. At this point, the SMA Energy System is ready for commissioning. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the installation of the Sunny Boy Storage. If you'd like to learn more, please visit the product page at sma-america.com. My name is Mike Mahan from the Solar Academy. Thanks for joining us.